Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Asshole Consultant, how you kids doing? You got questions, Cappy's got answers over at assholeconsulting.com, as long as you got money. Because with a name like Asshole Consulting, there's still some idiots and morons out there that think, oh, maybe I'll do it for free. Uh, very interesting question. <clears throat> Hi, Aaron. I would like to know your opinion on how well you think a black conservative such as Herman Cain or Ben Carson would do in getting people who normally vote Democrat to vote Republican. It's important to remember that most leftist voters have been brainwashed into thinking the Republican Party is just a bunch of racist, sexist, and even white supremacist old white males. And we are. We do. We have our old supremacist white male thing meeting every, every Tuesday so over at the Perkins. If a black conservative like Kane or Carson was chosen to represent the Republican Party in November presidential election, do you think they would be well supported by the black community? Or do you think most black people would think they're race traitors like many did Kanye West? How about young women in their 20s who almost always vote liberal? Do you think much of Hollywood would support a black conservative? It would have been very interesting to see how typical leftists would vote if a black conservative ran and was given mainstream exposure. Well, we don't know about that. Uh, well, we do have, like, with Ben Carson, Herman Cain, there was major, like, uh, in... God dang, you know, I, I know all my black brothers and sisters who tune in your audience on my side, but to, to, to kind of highlight something I, 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 to everybody out there, but particularly the black community, look at the last primary races of the presidential election, and you tell me where the real diversity was. And I don't just mean race. I'm talking about backgrounds, work experience. Uh, we could also talk male, female race and all that. The, the Republicans had a rainbow coalition. It was good. There was a lot of candidates in there. The Democrats was what, Hillary and the guy from Ohio, and then that guy left, and then it was Bernie. And they were all, all whitey mick, white, white that ever whited. They were all establishment. And none of them had any background experience beyond politics. They're all life, you know, career long politicians. So if the Republicans can unlock this, or if the Americans get their head out of their ass, maybe you see Republicans offer a little bit more choice. But uh, let's read my latest article about how we've, <clears throat> how the government outsourced socialism to the private sector. Um, it would have been interesting to see that I mentioned sure the left is usually very supportive of black males. Your thought the left is no, oh my god no you're wrong here you're you're wrong on this premise. The left the, the left is not supportive of black males. The, you want to talk about how can I put it? There's an honor among enemies where you go right up to their face and you, you stand off against them when, like, a, like a boxing match. And even then, boxing people aren't necessarily adversarial. It's, it's more of a sportsmanship. But there is an honor when you go up against somebody you disagree with honestly and forthright. All right? And uh, the Republicans, you could say, go to play, say, stop having kids out of wedlock, knock it off. Like, okay, may ruffle affairs, may, but they're honest. And even then, the Republicans are milky toast on that. What is... I don't even think there's a word for it. Despicable, evil, cowardly, hypocritical, disgusting. There's just, there's just no word for the level of scum where you have an enemy that lies to your face to take advantage of you. And that is what the left does, especially to black males. You want to talk about a group of people that, that has been abused and used to their most horrific uh, consequence. To, to the worst standards of living in America, black males, we could argue maybe uh, American Indians, so, but uh, let's not split hairs. We, in general, we'll agree that black males, bottom of the barrel, when I wrote the, the book, Black Man's Got a Poverty, life expectancy, health, uh, crime, being victims of, I mean, not, not perpetrating, but victims of uh, educate, da, 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 standards. I mean, it is. They are down. It's, if not tied with American Indians, they're they're first place for last place, <clears throat> and that is 100% due to the lies that the left has has told them. Um, they're they're no good. You can't do it without us. Whitey's out to get you. You need the government. Vote Democrats. We'll take care of you. Um, and they do. I know a lot of Democrats do this consciously because they just want the black vote. They just want the black vote. 
And what angers me more than anything is, is you got to think, listen to what they're saying, what the Democrats and the left are saying when they say, you need us. You, oh, there's evil whitey out there and he's oppressing you and you need us. We will take care of it. Now, translate that into what actionable items you can take. And what position does that put you in your own life? That is a position where you can't take any actions. There's nothing you can do. You're completely helpless. If you really believe, oh, I, got, I, I need the government to take, take care of this injustice out there. And if I vote for you, you'll take care of it? Okay, here you go. I, I vote for you, Mr. Democrat. Well, look, we're Democrat. <laughs> Detroit, Southside Chicago, Baltimore. Um, I try to point to the empirical historical results and consequences. All right, what have the results been these past 40, 50 years? Avoiding Democrat all the time on the black community. You're still dead last place. I'm not saying you even have to understand maybe the political nuances and the behind the scenes machinations or the economics of it, but could you try voting Republican? And not just voting a little bit like, oh, we got 12% of the blacks to vote for, for the Republican. No, I want to see Baltimore give it a long term shot. Well, let's, we don't have to do it on nationwide. Let's just try it on a micro scale first. Where let's just pick the people of Baltimore all decide to start voting Republican for 20 years and let's see what happens. Everybody votes Republican. What happens? And I'll bet you $10,000, and I will. If you're going to vote, okay, it'll never happen. But if Baltimore, the city, the municipality, the citizens of Baltimore would all vote Republicans all the time in, there's a pure social experiment. I can guarantee you they'd be better off than every other comparable city that's a crap hole. Detroit, Southside, Compton, whatever. Um, anyway, you are wrong. The left is not very supportive. They say that, but they are stabbing those guys in the back. The, the left, it, they're just, again, I cannot think of the, because, again, forthright, honorable enemies, at least there's a respect. I will meet you on the battlefield. There will be a duel. There will be, it will be equal, and you will face your enemy. The left just, oh my God, just despicable. Um, and for decades, decades, they've enslaved uh, uh, blacks to, to advance their leftist causes. Um, so the general over, so with that out of the way, I, I, to, and this will then answer many of the questions. Do I think leftists will vote if there's a conservative black? No, they won't. They won't. Um, because most leftists are brainwashed, doesn't matter the race or whatever. They're brainwashed to vote leftists. They're going to vote for the Democrat Party. Um, and the other reason, uh, leftists, again, regardless of race or gender, will vote against a black conservative is because black conservatives, male or female, are viewed as Uncle Tom's and Oreos and race traitors. Right? <clears throat> uh, now, I want to confirm this because two people, you bring up Herman Cain, Man, I was a huge Herman Cain supporter. I was also a huge um, brain surgeon supporter. What was his name? Ben Carson. Not because they were black. All these people, oh, you wrote a book for black people. Oh, and you supported Cain and, 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 and uh, uh, Carson. Oh, Claire just kissing up to the black. No. <laughs> the reason I support these guys, and it's not coincidental they're black, uh, but if you're a conservative and black, that means you definitely took a different route through life. Which also means you're probably very high IQ, and you didn't get through there in politics. Uh, what is his name? Is it Colonel West? Colonel, he's a black gentleman down in Florida. He had a show one time. If you look at him, he was a colonel in the military. Ben Carson is a brain surgeon. Herman Cain is a corporate executive, ran Godfather's Pizza. And that's why I like them, is because they have real world experience. They're not another dipshit fucking John McCain or Mitt Romney or politicians who say, is it, is it my turn yet? I'll have nice hair and a smiley teeth. It's like, no, I want a guy who grew up in poverty, made himself. And, it, and disproportionately, that confluence, someone who made it and then runs, you'll see a lot of poorer people who tend to come from not white backgrounds, who then become conservatives, went through the trials and tribulations that gave them real world working experience that would parlay them, I think, and make very good candidates. Um, so I think there are quite a lot more conservative or libertarian, at least, black candidates out there that would make superior candidates, not because they're black, but to become a black conservative, you must have gone through a lot of stuff. 
And you must be really in tune with the real world and you must be able to relate to the normal person. Not some dipshit that comes from the Bushes or the Bushes or the McCains or the Clintons or anyone else who's connected even though the Clintons are Republican. Um, so, that is why I, I like a, a, you are right in your thinking but for different angles. You think, ah, they're black. So that's going to steal some black votes from the Democrats because of tribalism and because of a uh, race association and all that. I'm here. No, that won't that won't help help. And then I, I looked up here because I want to get empirical evidence to see does being black help you win the black vote or to a lesser extent the Democrat vote. And the problem that they face this is from real real, real clear politics. They're looking at Alan Keyes. They're talking about Herman Cain. And the problem they face is there's not a lot of instances of Republican blacks or black Republicans running for office. It just isn't. Uh, and then they don't get that much of a vote in the primaries um, to result in enough empirical data to calculate it. But let me just read this so we, we can... The short version is they don't. They don't pull anything. Nothing... If you have a a black conservative and a white conservative running, let's say they won the nomination, what percentage of the black vote did they get? It's indistinguishable. They're about the same. So it doesn't matter if you run a white candidate or a black candidate. Um, even the few instances we have of African-American Republican candidates running in races that were high profile enough to justify exit polling offer little hope for Kane's quest. There has been only one recent instance of an African-American Republican running against an African-American Democrat for statewide office, Barack Obama's 2004 Senate race against Alan Keyes. While Keyes was far from the ideal Republican candidate in any sense, it is worth noting that he received only 8% of the African-American vote to Obama's 92%. Even African-American Republicans run against white Democrats struggled to capture more of the traditional Republican share of the African-American vote. 2006 elections present an interesting year where three high-profile African-American Republicans ran statewide races against white Democrats. Ken Blackwell, the Ohio gubernatorial race, Lynn Swan in the Pennsylvania gubernatorial race, and Michael Steele in the Maryland Senate race. The following chart gives the Republican share of African-American vote to all the statewide races that year where African-Americans made up at least 5% of the electorate. We should bear in mind that exit polls, like all polls, have sampling errors and that the subsample of African-American voters in sub some of these states, even with our 5% threshold in place, is probably on the order of 4 to 5%. Statewide Republican candidates received, on average, about 50% of the African-American vote and hew pretty close to that average. This is true regardless of the race of the Republican candidate. The only African-American Republican to break the 20% of the African-American vote was Michael Steele who did manage to run about 10, head, 10 points ahead of the party's gubernatorial candidate, Robert Ehrlich. Swan and Blackwell, Blackwell ran about five points ahead of their counterparts in the Senate races. Swan actually ran behind the national average for Republicans among African Americans that year. So <clears throat> what little data there is shows that there is no statistically significant advantage uh, wooing or winning over uh, African American votes with a black candidate. Um, so that's empirically speaking. Uh, and again, maybe if we ran more studies, if there were more uh, empirical data, we could we could confirm or, or deny. Uh, but to answer your question empirically in the real world, no, this doesn't work. Doesn't seem to work. The why is not the term. I know once you did some polling, but I'm going to tell you the reason why is, is I actually think that um, once you say conservative, the black community has been so propagandized and is so completely owned by the Democrat Party uh, that you are considered, if you if you run for the conservative party or Republican Party, you're a traitor. You're an Oreo. You are an Uncle Tom. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're male or female. Uh, what was it? Uh, Lynn, whatever her name was, or Michael Steele. Um, it, they just, they're just not going to vote for you any more than you would. So, in other words, it's the same Republicans uh, within the black community like, yeah, I, I do remember studying the Civil War and it was the Republicans who, who freed the slaves. Uh, or they just like, yeah, I like money and I don't want to be poor no more. They, there seems to be that 10 to 15 percent contingent of black voters that do vote Republican. Um, but it doesn't matter what race. They're going to vote because of political ideology, because of the politics and the economics behind it. 
Uh, once you say I'm a Republican, I think you're dead to the world of not only the black Democrat voting community, uh, but also leftists in general. Um, and, and you got, again, <clears throat> look at your non-black leftists or liberals. They, they probably look at a Herman Cain or a uh, Ben Carson or Michael Stan and say, oh, look at that poor black man who doesn't know he's being taken advantage of, that poor stupid black man who's running for the E. He doesn't know he's, 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 an, he's a Nazi dupe, he's a Nazi stooge. When it's like, uh, the guy probably thought a little bit more independently than you did there, uh, Miss uh, you know, Bobby Soxer with your degree in women's studies away. He's probably much more of a critical thinker than you are. Um, but especially now, now keep in mind we're going back almost a decade, well more than a decade with Keys and Obama on that Senate race. Uh, I think, especially as the millennials have come on board, this, the brainwashing and uh, racial politics has been turned up to 15. Not even necessarily between whites, blacks, Hispanics, or Asians, but especially the indoctrination and brainwashing uh, college kids have gone to. And so now as that group of people have come online, they are probably truly uh, colorblind when it comes to voting. I mean, if you're a Republican, you're a Nazi. If you're a Democrat, you're everything that's wonderful and amazing. We just need Venezuela. Oh, my goodness. So they just, I, I think they see red. Once they see Republican, nope. <clears throat> Trump, again, probably has polarized this. The politics have become more polarized. I think race is going to play even less role. Uh, it, it really is. Are you Team A or Team B? Are you blue or are you red? And, um, I, you know, you could say maybe there's a PR benefit to running a non-white as a, as a Republican, but empirically and historically speaking, it just doesn't seem to 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 work. It doesn't seem to fail either. Um, there's nothing wrong. I mean, it doesn't there's no drawback. But again, I, it gives me hope, at least on a principled level. Again, looking at the Republican primaries for the presidential, there was some meritocracy there. Uh, there was some genuine hope, some genuine, uh, it was genuinely democratic, not in the political party name like capital D, but small d, meaning it was whoever won the vote. A, a democracy <clears throat> was very apparent in the Republican presidential election. And, and they were honest, Trump won. The, the least like guy by the establishment still won. The establishment respected the will of the people. The Democrat Party? Ironically called the Democrat Party, suggesting democracy. <laughs> they did not get the party of the person they wanted, Bernie Sanders, socialist as he was. It was the, the establishment. Democrats said, no, screw you. We're going with Hillary Clinton. Um, but again, I don't think Democrats care. I don't think Democrats realize... It's her time. It's time a woman. What do you mean time? Woman? Really? We should vote because vagina? Well, isn't that sexist? That is the epitomal definition of sexism, isn't it? I'm voting for someone because of their gender? Because that that is sexist. Ah. All right. That's it. You guys got questions? Cappy's got answers. AssholeConsulting.com. I will be the great political analyst, as always, as long as you pay me money. We'll see you later. Toodles.